Hello, welcome again to Give Him 15, an appeal to heaven. Thank you for joining me. I appreciate it so much. Today we're going to talk about part two of a, a dream, actually two dreams, a sequel to the first dream. We're going to talk about very encouraging dreams about revival coming to America. And both of these, uh, these dreams refer to the Red River Meeting House, which is a place where revival broke out in the early 1800s, 1802, 3, 1, I don't know, right at the very beginning of the century. Then that influenced the Cane Ridge, Kentucky revival, which impacted tens of thousands of people. And then uh, that uh, began the Second Great Awakening, which really saved America uh, at the time. And then, of course, the dream also, the dreams mention uh, Azusa Street in Wales for powerful outpourings of the Holy Spirit. I encourage you to reread yesterday's if you didn't see it or go listen to it. Uh, these dreams are by Gina Goldston, who's written a wonderful book called Awakening the Church to Awaken a Nation, Finding God's Wisdom and Strategies for Our Times Through Prophetic Dreams, and Visions, and Revelation, forward by Chuck Pierce. Really wonderful book. And there's a link at the end of the post to get you to Gina's website. Also thought I'd show you, I have a, artifacts. I've been to these places, and I have uh, these little buckeyes that I picked up off the ground at Cane Ridge. I have a wonderful uh, souvenir memento given to me from the Bible College of Wales, where Reese Howells was, and um, the Bible school there in the prayer room and has now been redone. Some wood, some wood given to me, wood pins made from a tree at the Red River Meeting House, and a big chunk of wood given to me from there also uh, joy going to these places praying listening asking the lord for insight revelation history uh, asking him for the synergy of the of the ages just honoring what happened there saying lord do it again so anyway i've been to these places i love these places it's more than history to me it comes alive today's post is titled eagles on assignment Yesterday, I shared a dream given to Gina Golston in January of 2020. It spoke of four separate wells of revival being reopened by Holy Spirit. God is going to merge the anointings and power of these world-impacting outpourings, giving us the synergy of the ages. Get ready. My spirit leaped as I read the following sequel to the dream I shared yesterday. Sequels to dreams are fascinating and amazing to me. For Holy Spirit to give us this word, confirming and adding to the first dream, is a profound expression of his heart. He wants us to be encouraged, to know he has good plans for us. Plans to give us a future and a hope. And that word future there in Jeremiah 29, 11 means destiny. To give us a destiny, a good future, and a hope. February 2nd, 2021, the sequel. I dreamed I was standing with someone I did not know on a deck-like structure in the heavens. From this place, we were looking down observing the United States of America. Though I did not know who the man was, I could feel a strong anointing coming from him. What I felt emanating from him was causing me to have indescribable hope for the nation. As we were looking down, we saw what first appeared to be warplanes flying over the United States. The gentleman said to me, Oh my, I wonder what is happening in America. What do all these warplanes mean? He said this not with concern, but almost as though he was wanting me to see something that wasn't obvious. He looked at me as if I should know the right answer to his questions. 
I knew the answer to this one. Those are not warplanes. Those are eagles, I replied. I've seen them before in a dream. There are a hundred of them. They're carrying water from the reopened well of revival at the Red River Meeting House. It has been unlocked and is now gushing forth into the nation. I could clearly see that just as in the previous dream, the eagles were carrying arrows in one of their talons and a rolled up piece of paper in the other. Although they were still wet and dripping water from the geyser that drenched them at the Red River Meeting House. Or also, excuse me, also they were still wet and dripping water from the geyser that drenched them at the Red River Meeting House. As the eagles flew throughout America, they all simultaneously began diving. When nearing the ground, they leveled off and began dropping their arrows into the land. I knew there were a hundred eagles, each carrying three arrows. Three hundred arrows were released throughout America. As each arrow hit the ground, it ignited as though it had hit a gas pocket and a spiraling plume of fire shot up. We watched as the eagle, as the water the eagles were releasing was ignited by fire. This revival water from the Red River Meeting House was extremely flammable and instantly caught fire. It seemed as though all of America was on fire. As the dream, the fires of revival. And keep in mind that in the previous dream yesterday's, God was doing the same thing from Cane Ridge, from Azusa Street, from Wales. So this multiple release of revival anointings from the past coming, lighting fires of revival across America. As the dream continued, I became very aware of the power and presence of God. It was so strong, I fell to my knees and began to sob uncontrollably. The gentleman with me began speaking under an incredibly heavy anointing. It was then that I noticed he had a very strong accent. He said, you have seen correctly. This is how America will be saved. Do not doubt it. There is coming a sweeping move of the Spirit of God that will ignite America with the fire of His presence. This will bring a swift, undeniable awareness of God and an awakening. What seems to be one thing is about to be revealed as another, he continued. Some are in fear because of how things appear but others see with holy awe and expectation. The eagles are on assignment. They carry firepower. They carry his glory. At precisely the right moment, their arrows will be released, will hit their targets, and the move of God will ignite and spread very quickly. Then he said again, do not doubt it. Still on my knees, he says, I looked up at the man and suddenly knew he was Duncan Campbell, one of the leaders of the great Welsh revival. End of dream. God has not been outwitted by demons or by those who oppose his rule. Like a master chess player, he is leading his opponents into his trap, allowing them to think they've outmaneuvered him, just as he did at the cross. 
please believe me when I say the strategies of hell are about to break down and heaven is about to break in. Just as he did 2,000 years ago, God is about to declare checkmate. Get ready to see Psalm 2 lived out before your eyes. Evil strategies of rebellion toward Christ. This is all in that psalm. That's how it starts. Evil strategies of rebellion toward Christ. And that happens, by the way, through governments. God's mocking laugh, fury, and promise to his son. The son's acceptance. And two options in that psalm given to Christ's enemies. Kiss the son or be shattered by his rod of authority. Psalm 2, 10 to 12, the last three verses in the Passion Translation say, Listen to me, all you rebel kings and all you upstart judges of the earth. Learn your lesson while there's still time. Serve and worship the awe-inspiring God. Recognize his greatness and bow before him, trembling with reverence in his presence. Fall face down before him and kiss the sun before his anger is roused against you. Remember that his wrath can be quickly kindled, but many blessings are waiting for all who turn aside to hide themselves in him. Listen to me, all you rebel kings and all you upstart judges of the earth. Learn your lesson while there's still time. Another turn the world upside down era is now being launched. Eagles are flying. Firepower is being released and combustible re revival water is gushing. America shall be saved. Do not doubt it. And do not judge what God is doing by what you see and hear in the natural realm, certainly not by the media. Justice is coming. The appeal still works. And Christ still owns all of America even Washington, D.C. Let's pray this prayer together. Father, give us a greater revelation of thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. We remind ourselves of this and stir up our hearts to believe you are well able to send a sweeping revival that will transform America. You said... Zechariah 10.1, when it's time for the rain, ask for it. We do so now. Send forth the ignition arrows. Let your angels carry them now across this nation. You know where to strike. You know where the gas pockets are. Cause fires of revival to break forth from those places now. Let the river that flows from the Lamb on his throne, Revelation 22, 1, make its way once again through the wells of Red River Meeting House, Cane Ridge, Azusa Street, and Wales. Combine their flow to form the most powerful revival water earth has ever received. That's worth reading and asking again. Combine their flow, please, Father, to form the most powerful revival water earth has ever received. Then send it everywhere. As your messenger, your Welsh revival messenger admonished us, we do not doubt this. We do not doubt this. We are the well-able company. We are the whosoever will followers. 
We are the more than conqueror army. We are the offspring of the lion, the ambassadors of the king, and the all things are possible crowd. All because of Christ and all for his glory. So bring it, Lord. Do it now, we pray. In Christ's name, amen. And our decree today is the wells of revival are opening. The eagles are ready to fly. And the fire of Pentecost is coming. Wow, what a dream, huh? Be encouraged. Be encouraged. This is about to break forth. Thank you for joining me. I'll see you tomorrow. You know, just a second before we go, I, I want to go ahead. I want to pray for our, for former President Trump and uh, regarding this impeach, impeachment uh, trial that's beginning in the Senate. Let's just take another minute or two. This is not in your uh, post. I just want to do this. Father, we pray for Donald Trump. We thank you for him. We thank you for the service he gave this nation. Thank you for his heart for America. Lord, we thank you for the jobs his policies created. We thank you for the babies that he saved. We thank you for the uh, many things he did. Thank you for the way he supported Israel. And we thank you, Lord, for just the uh, ways that you used him. And Lord, we just pray now that you would work in this um, attempt to slander him and hurt him. Lord, we know he's hated by so many there in Washington. But we pray, Lord, that you would intervene in this um, fiasco of an impeachment and cause peace to come to our nation again and harmony to come to our nation once again, Lord. We pray that all this big vindictiveness would leave and our government would get back to what it should be doing. And, and Lord, that their hatred for this man would no longer be able to control those that should be there serving us. We just pray your blessing over him, over his legal team. We thank you for giving them wisdom and uh, understanding and we, we bless you for that. We thank you that you will do this, Lord. In Jesus' name, amen. Thank you.